This is Industry Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we analyze a different industry. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about the retail industry. Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get informed. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome back. We're so happy to have you here with us again. Today, we'll talk about something that has an ancient history but still has an impact on people today, the retail industry. By retail, we understand that customer goods and services are sold through multiple channels of distribution in order to earn a profit. The history of the retail industry started in antiquity, and over the centuries, the retail stores have evolved in what we know today as malls and shopping centers. Nowadays, the retail industry has developed a strategic part in which retailers plan everything and use the marketing mix in order to know the needs of their customers better, and to advertise their products and services better. Because of the popularity of social media, retailers started to sell their goods online to reach more and more customers. But let's learn about this industry in detail, shall we? Here are 15 things you didn't know about the retail industry. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Number 1. Brand loyalty is not dead. The term brand loyalty is used to describe the inclinations of the customer to favor one brand over another. Did you know that brand loyalty is actually all about the customer's emotions and their attachment to the brand? This concept goes hand in hand with customer retention and profit. Brand loyalty is pretty diversified nowadays. Customers are firstly driven by their feelings and emotions. These are the elements that influence them to go back to the same company. But their purchases are based on the function of the products and services. Studies have shown that if brands can appeal to both categories, their retention rate for customers can reach up to 77%. Number 2. Concept stores are the future of brick and mortar stores. We are living in a world in which we post every detail of our lives on social media. Therefore, online presence has become something really important, if not vital. Brick and mortar stores are being replaced with online stores and also concept stores. Nowadays, shopping is just as much about the experience, and lots of customers are paying more attention to the design of stores, the employees, the attitude of the brand, and other details that make or break the experience. But what's a concept store, you might ask? Concept stores are really small shops that may have a limited stock of brands or just a single brand. They are very similar to the specialty stores. These types of stores are based on the experience the customer has while buying the product or service and how it fits into their life. They sell a product, but also the feeling that you get from that product. And it's really working for them. Number 3. The Palais Royal was one of the most important marketplaces in Europe. The Palais Royal opened in 1784 in Paris and was one of the most important marketplaces in Europe as well as one of the oldest. The Palais Royal was made up of gardens, shops, and entertainment venues. 145 boutiques, cafes, salons, hair salons, bookshops, museums, refreshment kiosks, and two theaters gave life to the area. Products such as fine jewelry, furs, paintings, and furniture were sold there. The prices in the Palais Royal were amongst the first in Europe to become fixed, and systems like bartering were abandoned. The stores were dedicated to aristocracy, as they sold luxury items at quite steep prices. The middle class would still take a glimpse at the lifestyle and the goods they could not afford, as the shops had a wall made out of glass. Was this the beginning of window shopping? Because it sure sounds like it. Number 4. The paper bag was invented by a woman. Margaret Eloise Knight, also called the most famous 19th century woman, was a self-taught engineer and an amazing inventor. While working at the Columbia Paper Bag Company in 1868, Margaret invented a machine that folded and glued the brown paper bags so familiar to Americans nowadays and only seen in the movies by the rest of the world. 
She also invented a few other useful things for humanity, such as a safety device for the looms in mills, lid-removing pliers, a numbering machine, and some devices related to rotary engines. Moreover, Knight was the first woman to be awarded a U.S. patent, and she was included into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2006. She was quite a remarkable woman, to say the least. Number 5. The Retail Industry is Worth $33.5 Trillion in 2017, retailers declared that they earned $33.5 trillion in sales. That is an absolutely astonishing sum. The number represents a 3.9% bump in sales from 2016, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. Moreover, the National Retail Federation predicts growth between 3.8% and 4.4% in sales in 2018. They also project growth in online and other non-store sales, and that growth should be between 10% and 12%. It seems that online retailers are winning more and more on the current market. The CEO of the National Retail Federation, Matthew Shea, stated, We anticipate that consumers are going to continue to boost the economy with that additional income that's going to be showing up in their paychecks very soon. He also declared the retail industry is continuously transforming. Number 6. Fraud from employees, customers, and suppliers is still a problem. The retail industry is a fast-growing industry, and obviously when a lot of money and goods are involved, fraud becomes a problem. In 2016, the percentage of fraud in this industry was 1.47%, and in 2017, the rate reached 1.58%. Moreover, when merchandise goes missing, every employee in the retail chain is a suspect, from the driver of the truck in which the products were going to be delivered on, to the store employees and the cashiers. An interesting fact is that dishonest employees are causing more money loss than a shoplifter. And speaking of shoplifters, they love the self-checkout area in stores. Retailers and the police are still working on protecting the stores and brands from theft. Number 7. Abercrombie & Fitch used to have a lot of discriminatory policies. Being the talk of the town and being voted to the top of lists is usually something to be proud of, but not in this case for Abercrombie & Fitch. The brand was voted Most Hated Brand in America in the 2016 American Customer Satisfaction Index. Moreover, Abercrombie & Fitch had the lowest score ever on the list. The retailer is well known for its discriminatory policies. The brand released racist t-shirts, refused to employ non-white people, and banned certain employees from working in jobs related to customer interactions. The CEO of the brand, Mark Jeffries, stated they only hire good-looking people because beautiful people will attract customers from that demographic, also declaring that his brand is an exclusionary one. Gross. Number 8. Amazon buying Whole Foods is destroying big retailers. Jeff Bezos founded Amazon back in 1994, and since then the company became the third most valuable public company, following closely the first two places occupied by Apple and Alphabet. Amazon has become so big that the company is blamed for killing smaller companies or businesses. There's even an investment firm that created an index called Death by Amazon that tracks the stock prices of 54 retailers that are most threatened by the growing company. Recently, Amazon bought Whole Foods, and even though Bezos' company only controls a small portion of the grocery business, small retailers are worried about their business. Studies have shown that online shopping for groceries is not that popular, and customers still prefer the old-fashioned way of shopping for them themselves. Nevertheless, retailers still feel threatened by the retailing giant and their purchase of Whole Foods. Number 9. Pop-up stores are appearing all over the world to offer new experiences. As we mentioned already, customers are paying more and more attention to the in-store experience. While online businesses are going incredibly well, the online experience can be completed by the in-store one. Many online companies nowadays are opening pop-up shops in unexpected locations. For example, the online brand Glossier opened up a pop-up store in New York, its only physical location. 
The store is all about the experience as it's so eye-catching that every corner of it is worth an Instagram snapshot. Pop-up shops are only available for a limited amount of time, which makes them even more appealing to the customers. Many influential people agree that shopping is all about the experience, hospitality, entertainment, and community. Doug Stevens at Business of Fashion's Voices said, Stores can't just be about distributing products, they need to be about distributing experiences. Less stores, more stories. Number 10. The richest retailer is Jeff Bezos, with a net worth of $132.5 billion. Jeff Bezos is an American entrepreneur, investor, and philanthropist. And if you didn't know it already, he's also the founder of Amazon, a company he created in 1994, and now owns 16% of the company's stocks. His net worth is $132.5 billion, and he's the first person to pass the $100 billion mark as number one on Forbes' list of the world's billionaires. In 2000, Bezos founded another company called Blue Origin, which is a manufacturer and service provider for private human spaceflight. Moreover, he believes in colonizing space and since 2016 has been selling $1 billion in Amazon stock each year to support Blue Origin. Jeff also purchased the Washington Post in 2013 for $250 million in cash. Want to know some more about the richest person in the world? Make sure to check out our 15 things you didn't know about Jeff Bezos video by clicking in the top right corner. Number 11. Retail apocalypse is affecting a majority of big retailers all over the world. Since 2010 up until nowadays, a large number of North American brick and mortar stores are closing. This phenomenon is known in the retail industry as the retail apocalypse. It's said that the retail apocalypse is closely related to the middle class squeeze, meaning it's very much related to the decrease in income and the increase in costs for things like education, healthcare, and housing. Moreover, with the overexpansion of malls and shopping centers and the rise in rent, physical stores all over the US are finding it hard to break even. An enormous number of shops, 1,200 to be exact, are affected by this phenomenon right now. Customers have also changed their buying habits too. They prefer a more satisfying in-store experience or just buying online to avoid the trouble of going to a physical store. Number 12. Online sales skyrocketed over the last few years. Online stores have gained popularity in the past few years just because online shopping is more comfortable and it saves you the trouble of going to the store yourself. Studies show that consumers in the US buy products and services online worth more than $50 billion a month. The retail services that only sell on the internet are usually run by entrepreneurs. They also employ fewer people than physical stores and invest significant sums of money in advertising and marketing, those two being the only ways for them to attract customers. The fast fashion giants like H&M and Intidex have already caught on to the online trend and their online stores are offering significant discounts to attract first-time customers. Number 13. M-commerce is the new buzzword. The M-commerce term is referring to the mobile commerce process, that is, the buying and selling of goods through mobile phones. M-commerce is also known as the future of e-commerce. Mobile commerce has gained popularity in the past few years, especially amongst youngsters. In Germany, over 39% of e-commerce sales are actually m-commerce sales, and in France, over a third of sales are made through mobile devices. Cologne Burnett, director of EMEA Retail Research at JLL, claims that millennials and younger consumers are becoming larger parts of the key spending demographic, and they tend to prefer mobile devices as a primary computing device. He also says that the increase of the screen size in smartphones is closely related to sales in m-commerce. How much of your online shopping is done on a mobile phone? Number 14. Stores are meant to make you lose track of time. 
Just like in casinos, stores are actually meant to make you lose track of time. If you spend more time in the store, the chances for you to buy something that you don't actually need increases. Retailers know this fact very well, and that's why they developed a few strategies to make you waste your time in the stores. Among these strategies is one in which they change the places of items from time to time. That one's pretty popular. Through this method, they make sure you wander around the shop in order to get what you need while unconsciously looking at other products. Another strategy to make you lose track of time and spend lots of money is the way stores are designed. They are intentionally made as a sort of a maze, so you have to go through every aisle to get out of the store. Number 15. At Boston University, you can study the history of shopping. At Boston University, there are a lot of interesting courses you can take, but one of the most appealing is the Modern American Consumer course, through which you can study the history of shopping. Moreover, the class shows you insights into the consumer culture, the rise of mass marketing, advertising, branding, department stores, commercial amusements, and shoppertainment. In addition to this, the course puts everything into the filter of ethnicity, youth, gender, and social class. According to one of the professors, all human beings have a relationship to objects, to things, to stuff. It's not difficult for anybody to relate to the topic. We're all shoppers. We just do it without this kind of consciousness of what we're doing, and most of us without any sense of how these behaviors evolved. And that's it for today, Aluxers. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. We hope you enjoy these interesting facts. Now, before you go, we'd like to ask, do you prefer online shopping or in-store experiences? Let us know in the comments. And of course, because you're still with us, you are a true Aluxer after all. Here's one more bonus fact. Number 16, people shopping at luxury stores are less likely to help those in need. More often than not, consumers don't act in their best financial interest, and buying overpriced items from luxury stores is not helping their budgets. Also, buying luxury products can fill people up with a fake sense of self-confidence and self-trust. According to three experiments published in 2016 in the journal Social Influence, people who shop at luxury stores are less likely to help those in need. Moreover, the studies have shown that even if you are standing near a luxury store, it decreases the chances of you helping others. Not only do we feel better about ourselves when we purchase expensive products, but apparently we no longer are compassionate and we choose to ignore those in need of help. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you want more, we handpicked these videos you might enjoy, or head over to alux.com for the best in fine living content on the planet. Be a part of the largest community of luxury enthusiasts in the world and tell your story.